Vector bundles are a simpler case of manifolds since there is a linear structure on the fibers. What we are going to see today is the tubular neighborhood theorem. Given any submanifold, there exists a neighborhood of that submanifold that can be interpreted as a vector bundle, indeed as the normal vector bundle. First, let us define a tubular neighborhood, tubular neighborhood of a submanifold. Let M be a submanifold of manifold B. We say that F psi is a tubular neighborhood of M if psi is a vector bundle over M and we have an embedding from E to B, okay, such that the image of E is an open subset of B and the restriction of F to M is the identity of M, where uh, in E we are identifying M with the zero section of our vector bundle. In particular, what we get is that the map F between E and its image is a diffeomorphism. And we often say that W, the image of E, is a tubular neighborhood of M because W is just diffeomorphic to the total space of a vector bundle. Moreover, since there is a projection, the projection of our vector bundle from E to M, we get also a projection defined uh, in W to M, a retraction, because uh, uh, the value of any point in M is going to be itself. And this retraction pi, okay, is just going to be the composition of the inverse of f with p. Okay, so we have an overall retraction from a neighborhood of m to f. Okay, we can define a concept that is as useful as the concept of a tubular neighborhood, namely partial tubular neighborhood. Okay, in this case we consider again a submanifold m of a manifold b. And we say that F psi u is a partial tubular neighborhood of M. If uh, psi is again a vector bundle over M, u is now not the total space of our vector bundle, but just a neighborhood, an open neighborhood of the zero section. And F is an embedding from u to b. Again, we are going to require that the image of u is an open subset of b, and as a consequence, the map F between U and its image is a diffeomorphism, and again we require that the restriction of F to M is just the identity on M. In this case, we are just, uh, what's the connection with tubular neighborhood? The unique difference is, just, is that we are replacing the total space of our vector bundle with an open neighborhood of the zero section the remainder of the definition is the same. We often say that W, the image of U, is just a partial tubular neighborhood of M. And since we have obviously here the projection of the vector bundle defined in U, again, we get a retraction pi from a neighborhood W, which is just the image of U by F, from a neighborhood of M in our manifold B to M which is just, again, the composition of the inverse of F and P. So uh, we get more or less the same objects than we got with uh, uh, tubular neighborhood. And indeed, it is very easy to see that if we have a partial tubular neighborhood, then we can construct a tubular neighborhood, okay? Now, uh, after defining a tubular neighborhood, and partial tubular neighborhood, let us show that any submanifold of Rn has a tubular neighborhood. Okay? Indeed, we are going to show that uh, it has a partial tubular neighborhood. The first thing that we are going to consider for the proof is the geometric normal bundle. The geometric normal bundle of M in Rn. Uh, this is possible because in Rn we can consider the standard inner product. 
Okay. Very good. So uh, what we can uh, do now is defining a map from psi to our n. From indeed it could be from the total space of our vector bundle to our n. And here we are going to consider x u. This is just notation for a vector, uh, a tangent vector u in in psi x, okay, in in the fiber of the geometric normal bundle. And uh, we are going to send this uh, x u to the sum of x and u. This, for instance, if our uh, sub-manifold is infinity, uh, then this is a infinity map. Okay, what we have now is that the restriction of f to m, where we are again identifying m with the zero section, it's just the identity map. And so, as a consequence, the differential at a point x0, a point of the zero section of f restricted to the tangent space of m at x is just the identity. Okay? But uh, we also have that uh, the differential of this f uh, at x0 is the identity over the fiber of our vector bundle. And yeah, this map over here is uh, just linear in U. So what we get is that the differential of f at a point of the zero section restricted to the sum of these spaces is going to be the identity too. Okay, but this is just the tangent space to the total space of the vector bundle at the point, uh, okay, at the point x0. Okay, this is the identity. And the reason is that this space over here is the direct sum of these two spaces, okay? But now, what we can actually notice is that this, uh, uh, let's say the, the tangent space to the total space of the vector bundle at x0 can be identified with Rn, okay? And as a consequence, we get that this map over here, okay, it's indeed yeah, it's indeed the identity, the identity map of Rn. And so we can use the inverse function theorem, okay? Uh, what we are going to have is that uh, F is indeed a local diffeomorphism in a neighborhood of M. Uh, neighborhood of M. But uh, we have to uh, see that the image of a point uh, in M, which it's a point in the zero section, is going to be just X. So this F, which is a local diffeomorphism in a neighborhood of M, satisfies too that it is injective over M. And as a consequence, it is possible to find there exists some uh, U, an open neighborhood of M uh, in the total space of our vector bundle, such that the restriction of F to U is indeed an embedding. Right? And uh, that's what we wanted to prove. So we have actually a partial tubular neighborhood, okay? Uh, here, 
f is injective over m, and, and we can find this u, which is a small open neighborhood of m, such that f continues to be injective, and indeed, a little bit more than that is an embedding, OK? So we prove the existence of a tubular neighborhood for a submanifold without boundary of Rn. Now we are going to generalize this result to a submanifold of B of any manifold, where uh, these two manifolds, both M and B, are indeed manifolds without boundary. In that case, we always have a tubular neighborhood. The first thing that we are going to notice, since we want to reduce basically the proof to the previous case, is that we can consider B as a submanifold of Rn because there exists, by the Whitney embedding theorem, a, um, a proper embedding from B to some Rn. This M can be considered to be twice the dimension of B plus one, for instance. So we have here a, a proper embedding. And as a consequence, we can consider B as a subset of Rn. Now we have an inner product in the tangent space of Rn, obviously the usual inner product, and that's going to induce inner products in the tangent spaces of B and M, okay? So we can consider now Psi being uh, the geometric normal bundle of M in B. And now we can define essentially the same map than for the case where B was Rn. Here we have uh, Psi, okay, here we have Rn, and here we are sending Xu to x plus u, right? What happens is that uh, we already know that the tangent space of E at the point x0 can be identified with the tangent space of B at x. And exactly in the same way uh, that uh, and in this space can be considered obviously as a subspace of Rn because uh, B is contained in Rn. And by repeating uh, the proof of the previous case, what we get is that the differential of F at a point of the zero section restricted to the tangent space of uh, B at X is just the identity map, okay? How can we use this now? How can we use this now, okay? Okay, let's uh, write here the property, the restriction to the tangent space of B at X is just the identity map, okay? And uh, this happens for every X in M. And moreover, now using that B is a submanifold of Rn, we can apply the tubular neighborhood theorem to B. And one of the consequences of the tubular neighborhood theorem is that there exists a retraction uh, R from W to B, where W is going to be a neighborhood, an open neighborhood of B in Rn, okay? Where W is an open neighborhood of a B in Rn. But something that it is interesting is that if we consider the differential of this re retraction at a point x 
in B. Okay. And uh, uh, we consider the restriction to the tangent space of B at X. This is again the identity map because the restriction of R to B is the identity. So in particular, and as a consequence of uh, this result, when we consider the differential of the composition of uh, actually uh, F and R, uh, and R sorry, at uh, point X zero, what we get is the identity map, the identity map of the tangent space of B at X, right? That's what we get. And uh, right now, the great thing about this map is that uh, it is true that uh, it's, not, it's not sufficient in order to do the proof to consider F because the image of uh, a neighborhood of the zero section is not containing B. So you're not going to obtain a tubular neighborhood in B. When we apply the retraction, we fall in B. Of course, we need uh, uh, the points in the image of F to be in this W, but this is possible just considering points very close to the zero section. So we have now a map, which is just the composition of F and R, okay, which is going to be defined in a neighborhood of the zero section, okay, and whose, uh, whose uh, target space is just going to be B. And uh, since this map has a differential which is trivial, it's the identity map, we can repeat the argument in the previous proof. We are going to have a local diffeomorphism in the neighborhood of the zero section. And uh, we have to realize too that this map applied to a vector in the zero section is going to be just the identity. And so it is injective in the zero section. And so uh, analogously, as in the previous proof, there is going to be a small neighborhood of the zero section in which the composition of F, of F sorry, and R is going to be an embedding, okay? So what we get is that there exists a neighborhood, uh, let's say, uh, I don't know, uh, W prime of um, the zero section in E such that this composition over here restricted to W prime is an embedding. And so we want a partial tubular neighborhood as we wanted to prove. Unfortunately, the boundary of manifold has no tubular neighborhood, but it has a half tubular neighborhood, so-called color. Okay, so the definition is the following, let M be a delta manifold, so a manifold with non-empty boundary. A color of the boundary is an embedding, F, from the boundary of M times the closed interval zero infinity, such that F of X zero is equal to X for every X in the boundary of M. That's just a call. It's just uh, giving it's, you can consider this, uh, for instance, as a, almost as a trivialization of the normal bundle of the boundary of M in M, okay? And the theorem that we are going to see is that the boundary of M has a color. This happens always. So why is that? Uh, the first thing that uh, we can actually see is that essentially we can apply the tubular neighborhood theorem to the boundary of M 
and we could have a tubular neighborhood. And at, uh, to a tubular neighborhood, we have associated a retraction. We can consider the retraction just in M, and we get in this way, uh, there exists a retraction R from W to the boundary of M, where W is an open neighborhood of the boundary of M in M. Okay. Of course, the retraction is defined in M. Okay. Uh, we already uh, considered an exercise in which we proved that uh, there exists. Uh, a differentiable function, if uh, our manifolds are as infinity, it could be a infinity function, defined actually in M with values in the non-negative real numbers, such that the preimage of zero is uh, the boundary of M, okay, and uh, zero is a regular value. Okay, we have these two maps, R and D. And what happens now is that we can consider uh, our neighborhood W of the boundary of M in which uh, R is defined. And uh, we can consider here a map to the product of the boundary of M and the interval zero infinity, which sends a point X in the image of R by the retraction and then G of X. Let's call this map, for instance, F. And what happens actually is that uh, by construction, what we have is that F is uh, an immersion at uh, every point of the boundary. Moreover, at a point of the boundary, we have that the retraction is X and the value of G is zero, okay? So a condition that actually we want for a color. And uh, now, since uh, this map defined in the boundary of M is indeed injective, what we get is that up to consider a smaller neighborhood of the boundary of M, okay, uh, there exists an open neighborhood W prime of the boundary of M in M such that uh, the restriction of F to uh, this W prime is indeed an embedding. And so it's a diffeomorphism. Okay. There is a small issue because in general, it's not true that the image of F is going to be the product of the boundary of M and the interval zero infinity. In general, we are going to have as the image a neighborhood of the product of the boundary of M and zero. So this construction provides what we could call a partial color. That's, uh, that could be enough for applications. But indeed, it is not very difficult to build a color from a partial call. And I'm going to let that task to you as an exercise, okay? Here we see that uh, when we have a closed knit submanifold, of uh, a manifold with boundary B, then uh, the boundary of B has a color that restricts to a color of the boundary of M in M, 
Okay. For instance, consider here the boundary of B, and here B. Okay, and let's consider a needs of manifold M. In general, it's not true that the restriction of a color of the boundary of B is a color of the boundary of M in M. Because for instance, the fiber of the retraction going uh, through this point, let's assume here for the example that B has dimension two and M has dimension one, the, the, the fiber through that point does not have to be contained in M. And it can be something like this. But it is possible actually to modify a little bit the construction so that uh, the fiber through that point is containing M and it from that, uh, the fiber going through that other point satisfies that too. And in that way, we get the restriction of our color to M is a color of the boundary of M, okay? Uh, another theorem that we are not going to prove, but whose proof depends on the result that we just introduced, is the following. Let M be a closed knit submanifold of B, then M has a tubular neighborhood in B. Okay, so again, let us consider a picture. Here, that's the boundary of B. Here it's B. Now consider here M. And uh, what the theorem says is that M has a tubular neighborhood in B. This tubular neighborhood is going to be something like this. In the example, the region between the two green curves, okay? And the fibers of the retraction associated to the tubular neighborhood are going to be the orange curves. And the issue here, and what makes the construction a little bit more difficult than a tubular neighborhood or a manifold without boundary, is that we need that uh, the fibers through the points in the boundary of M have to be contained in the boundary of B. But it is possible actually to consider a construction in which this happens. Now let us introduce this theorem that has a technical interest and will be used when we study the properties of the degree of a differentiable map, okay? So let's consider here two maps, Fj. Indeed, it's, I think it's better to consider the indexes 0 and 1 and not 1 and 2. We are going to shift the indexes where the dimension of M is equal to M. So the dimension of the source and target spaces is the same. And we are going to assume that the determinant of the differential at the origin of the composition of uh, F1 and the inverse of F2 is uh, positive. So then we want to prove that F1 is isotopic to F2 relative to zero. What does this mean? Okay, what, um, what we want, what it doesn't mean to be isotopic is we want to find a map F from a neighborhood of uh, the origin in Rn times uh, the closed interval zero one to M, okay, such that, um, here we have the map, and what we want, uh, of course, we can define f t uh, as just f t of x as just a capital F of x t, and in that way, we get a family of maps from a u to m. So. We are going to require that this map over here is differentiable, first of all. And besides that, we are going to require that Ft is an embedding for every t in the closed interval zero one. 
So uh, that's what uh, isotopy means, that the family Ft is a part of embeddings. Besides that, we need another condition here because uh, we get uh, this relative to zero, which means that uh, the image of zero is always the same. So in other words, that the image of zero t is always equal to x zero for every t. That's the relative part. Okay, so let us try to uh, find this map f. Okay, first of all, uh, as I said, let us call our maps f0 and f1. We can consider a matrix a0, which is going to be just the differential of f0 at the origin. We consider the linear map a0. Uh, first of all, bef before that, we can also consider that uh, uh, m, m is equal to Rn and x0 is equal to 0. Essentially, this is a local theorem, so we can work in Rn and in a neighborhood of 0. Okay, now we have uh, our linear map A0, which is the differential, and the map A1, which is going to be the differential at the origin of F1. The condition over here implies that the determinant okay, of uh, the inverse of A1 times A0 is positive. That in particular implies that both determinants have the same sign. Okay? Either they are both positive or both negative. So they are both in the same connected components, the same connected component of uh, the set of regular matrices, which is an open set of R n square. So there exist a C infinity path that we can call A. Okay, to uh, the linear group such that the value of a at 0 is a0 and the value of a at 1 is a1. Moreover, something that it is interesting is that f0 is going to be uh, the product of the matrix A0 and X plus here a uh, remainder term R0 whose derivative at 0 is uh, it's 0, of course. So, and we have also a remainder for the map F1. Right? Now we can define our map F. F is going to be defined, of course, in a, a neighborhood of zero in Rn times uh, zero one, and its image is going to be, the target space is going to be Rn times R. And uh, the image of X, Xt is going to be At, the matrix At times X, plus 1 minus t times r0 of x plus t times r1 of x uh, t, right? What happens is that uh, what we get is that uh, when t is 0, this is just the map f0. And when t is 1, this is just the map F1. So we have a homotopy, okay, uh, from F0 to F1. What we want to check out is that this homotopy is indeed an isotopy, right? But uh, the second component is always equal to T, so we just have to see what happens with the derivative with respect to X. 
the, indeed the derivative of this first component with respect to x. And uh, this derivative is going to be at, uh, okay, at the point 0 t is going to be just equal to a t, which is a regular matrix. Okay, this happens for every t in 0, 1. So this fact, together with uh, the property that the second component is just t, implies, okay, you can check that out, that f is indeed the differential of uh, f at a point zero t is indeed a linear isomorphism between rm plus one and rm plus one. And this happens for every t in zero one. We also have that the image of zero t is indeed uh, equal to zero, t, right? So this map is injective over the, the product of zero and the closed interval. So again, as uh, we have actually considered several times during this lecture, we are going to have that there exists a small neighborhood of the origin in Rn such that the restriction of f is indeed a an embedding, and in this case, a diffeomorphism. So there exists a neighborhood u prime of zero in Rn such that the restriction to u prime times zero one is indeed, or to a yes, is indeed a, a diffeomorphism. Well, and in particular, an embedding is an embedding. And uh, in, then the restriction to every fiber, okay, the restriction to every fiber, the FT, is also going to be an embedding. Okay, that's uh, immediate. Okay, it's very, very simple, it's straightforward. So we get what we wanted. Of course, uh, the, the isotopy is relative to, 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 to zero, okay? Because the value, when we consider here, the first, uh, we consider f of zero t is zero t. So the first component is zero. Indeed, the, and, and that's uh, what we want, okay? In this differential topology course, we have introduced several techniques regarding differentiable manifolds, the space of differentiable maps, transversality, and vector bundles. What we want now is applying all these tools to extract geometrical consequences. For instance, we want to study the set of differentiable maps between manifolds of the same dimension up to homotopy, the properties of uh, those maps up to homotopy. And also we want to study the properties of the intersection of submanifolds of a given manifold of complementary dimension. And all the tools that we have developed till now could be extremely useful in order to say interesting things. So that's going to be uh, our goal in the next lecture, exploiting all the knowledge that we acquire till this moment. Thank you for your attention.